Proverbs 23 verses 1 to 35, When thou sittest to eat with a ruler, consider diligently what is before thee, and put a knife to thy throat. If thou be a man given to appetite, be not desirous of his dainties, for they are deceitful meat. Labor not to be rich, cease from thine own wisdom. Wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings, they fly away as an eagle toward heaven. Eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye, neither desire thou his dainty meats. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. The morsel which thou hast eaten shalt thou vomit up, and lose thy sweet words. Speak not in the ears of a fool, for he will despise the wisdom of thy words. Remove not the old landmark, and enter not into the fields of the fatherless, for their Redeemer is mighty. He shall plead their cause with thee. Apply thine heart unto instruction, and thine ears to the words of knowledge. Withhold not correction from the child, for if thou beatest him with the rod, he shall not die. Thou shalt beat him with the rod, and shalt deliver his soul from hell. My son, if thine heart be wise, my heart shall rejoice, even mine. Yeah, my reins shall rejoice when thy lips speak right things. Let not thine heart envy sinners, but be thou in the fear of the Lord all the day long. For surely there is an end, and thine expectation shall not be cut off. Hear thou, my son, and be wise, and guide thine heart in the way. Be not among wine vibbers, among riotous eaters of flesh, for the drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty, and drowsiness shall clothe a man with rags. Hearken unto thy father that begot thee, and despise not thy mother when she is old. Buy the truth, and sell it not, also wisdom and instruction and understanding. The father of the righteous shall greatly rejoice, and he that begetteth a wise child shall have joy of him. Thy father and thy mother shall be glad, and she that bare thee shall rejoice. My son, give me thine heart, and let thine eyes observe my ways. For a whore is a deep ditch, and a strange woman is a narrow pit. She also leath in weight as for a prey, and increaseth the transgressors among men. Who hath woe? Who hath sorrow? Who hath contentions? Who hath babbling? Who hath wounds without cause? Who hath redness of eyes? They that tarry long at the wine, they that go to seek mixed wine. Look not thou upon the wine when it is red, when it giveth his color in the cup, when it moveth itself aright. At the last it biteth like a serpent, and stingeth like an adder. Thine eyes shall behold strange women, and thine heart shall utter perverse things. Yeah, thou shalt be as he that leath down in the midst of the sea, or as he that leath upon the top of a mast. They have stricken me, shalt thou say, and I was not sick. They have beaten me, and I felt it not. When shall I awake? I will seek it yet again. Opening sentence. Proverbs 23 verses 1 to 2, When thou sittest to eat with a ruler, consider diligently what is before thee, and put a knife to thy throat, if thou be a man given to appetite. Finding the theme, drunk on deception. The entire chapter is addressed to the king of Israel. It begins with his invitation to partake of false doctrine, pictured by food and drink served by the enemy. The chapter ends with a man drunk on the wine of false doctrine. The motivation for the king to sit at this seductive feast is his pursuit of riches apart from the word of God. A wicked king is not content to trust God's word and to wait upon his blessings, desirable dainties and deceitful meat. Proverbs 23 verse 3, be not desirous of his dainties, for they are deceitful meat. The first time the word meat is found is in Genesis 24 verse 33. Abraham's servant was determined to obey his master before he ate meat. Jesus used the word meat in regards to doing God's will. John 4 verse 34, Jesus saith unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me, and to finish his work. Job also considered God's word to be far more valuable than physical food. Job 23 verse 12, Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips, I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Uncertain riches. Proverbs 23 verses 4 to 5 Labor not to be rich. Cease from thine own wisdom. Wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle toward heaven. No king of Israel, nor any son of God, should work for the purpose of obtaining riches. God had already promised riches to those in Israel who obeyed his word, Deuteronomy 28. A king who set his heart on gaining wealth would be relying on man's wisdom instead of God's. Neither physical riches nor the wisdom of man are eternal, only the word of God endures forever. Proverbs 27 verse 24, for riches are not forever, and doth the crown endure to every generation? James 5 verses 2 to 3, 
Your riches are corrupted, and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rest of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heaped treasure together for the last days. Thy sweet words. Proverbs 23 verses 6 to 8 Eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye, neither desire thou his dainty meats. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. The morsel which thou hast eaten shalt thou vomit up and lose thy sweet words. The bread of him that has an evil eye contains leaven, which represents false doctrine. Matthew 16 verse 12, Then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Matthew 13 verse 33, Another parable spake he unto them, the kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven, which a woman took, and hid in three measures of meal, till the whole was leavened. God, who knows what is in the hearts of all men, gave Israel his word to protect them from the seduction of the strange woman and the evil man. Proverbs 2 verses 12 and 16. If they chose to partake in the false doctrine of their enemies, it would cause them to lose the sweet words which God had given them. Thy words, Proverbs 23 verse 9, speak not in the ears of a fool, for he will despise the wisdom of thy words. In verse 1, God warned the king to beware of sitting down to fellowship with a king of another nation. He was more likely to be seduced by his false doctrine than to influence the king for good. The nations surrounding Israel worshipped false gods, which they had created with their own hands. Therefore, God called them fools. These gods could not hear, speak, or move. Psalms 135 verses 15 to 18. In Genesis chapter 11, Mankind rejected the knowledge of the one true God, turned to these false idols, and thus became fools. Romans 1 verses 22 to 23, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-foot beasts and creeping things. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 20, but I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Do not exchange the land for riches. Proverbs 23 verses 10 to 11 remove not the old landmark and enter not into the fields of the fatherless, for their Redeemer is mighty. He shall plead their cause with thee. Removing the old landmark pertains to Israel's national borders surrounding the promised land and the lots of the inheritance of the 12 tribes. In the previous chapter, God warned the king against removing landmarks, particularly for financial gain. 22, 28. It was troth the tithe of his promised land by which God had made provision for orphans and widows in the law of Moses. Deuteronomy 26, verse 12. When thou hast made an end of tithing, all the tithes of thine increase the third year, which is the year of tithing, and hast given it unto the Levite, the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, that they may eat within thy gates and be filled. To plead their cause is God's judgment upon those who would oppress the fatherless. Psalm 68 verse 5, a father of the fatherless and a judge of the widows is God in his holy habitation. A reminder, Proverbs 23 verse 12, apply thine heart unto instruction and thine ears to the words of knowledge. God reminds the king what he has already taught him in the book of Proverbs. In order to judge righteously, the king must labor and trust in the word of God. Proverbs 2 verse 2, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding. The king is father. Proverbs 23 verses 13 to 14, withhold not correction from the child. For if thou beatest him with the rod, he shall not die. Thou shalt beat him with the rod and shalt deliver his soul from hell. The child is the fatherless child mentioned in verse 10. As a representative of God, the king is a father to the fatherless, Psalm 68 verse 5, James 1 verse 27. It was his responsibility to train up the fatherless child. God is father. Proverbs 23 verses 15 to 16, my son, if thine heart be wise, my heart shall rejoice, even mine. Yeah, my reins shall rejoice when thy lips speak right things. God is the father of the nation of Israel and a father to their king. God instructed the king as a son and gave him the wisdom of his words so he could judge with righteous judgment and speak right things. It pleased the Lord when his son had faith in his words. Envy not sinners. Proverbs 23 verses 17 to 19, let not thine heart envy sinners, but be thou in the fear of the Lord all the day long. For surely there is an end, 
and thine expectation shall not be cut off. Hear thou, my son, and be wise, and guide thine heart in the way. The hearkens back to God's warning in verse 3. Be not desirous of his dainties, for they are deceitful meat. Instead of envying the wicked for their wealth and believing their false doctrine, the king is instructed to wait upon the Lord's blessings. Job 5 verse 2. For wrath killeth the foolish man, and envy slayeth the silly one. Proverbs 3 verse 31. Envy thou not the oppressor, and choose none of his ways. Eat drink and be merry. Proverbs 23 verses 20 to 21, be not among wine-bibbers, among riotous eaters of flesh, for the drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty, and drowsiness shall clothe a man with rags. The enemy set a table overflowing with the dainties of spiritual meat and drink, which is false doctrine. Throughout their history, the children of Israel were repeatedly tempted to partake of this deception. Exodus 32 verse 6, And they rose up early on the morrow, and offered burnt offerings, and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat, and to drink, and rose up to play. Numbers 25 3, And Israel abode in Shittim. And the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. And they called the people unto the sacrifices of their gods. And the people did eat, and bowed down to their gods. And Israel joined himself unto Balpir, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. The children of Israel ate literal mint and drank literal wine while partaking in these rituals and worshiping false gods. They were, no doubt, made physically drunk with wine, but far worse was the spiritual drunkenness, drowsiness, and darkness which completely deceived them. Hearken unto God. Proverbs 23 verses 22 to 25 Hearken unto thy father that begot thee, and despise not thy mother when she is old. Buy the truth, and sell it not, also wisdom, and instruction, and understanding. The father of the righteous shall greatly rejoice, and he that begetteth a wise child shall have joy of him. Thy father and thy mother shall be glad, and she that bare thee shall rejoice. God begged the king and the nation to hear his words. Instead of buying into the lies of the enemy and envying the wealth of sinners, God instructed them to buy truth. As verse 15 already stated, when the king obeyed the word of God by faith, it caused God's heart to rejoice. God versus the strange woman. Proverbs 23 verses 26 to 28, my son, Give me thine heart, and let thine eyes observe my ways. For a whore is a deep ditch, and a strange woman is a narrow pit. She also leath in wait as for a prey, and increaseth the transgressors among men. The son was warned against the evil man and the strange woman in Proverbs chapter 2, 12 19. The king would either choose to love God and obey his word, or he would choose to love the strange woman and obey her false doctrine. See Proverbs chapter 6 particularly verses 5 and 26, regarding the strange woman's pursuit of the prey. The son's hope for escaping the snare of the strange woman is to fully commit his heart unto his father's instructions, Deuteronomy 6 verse 5, Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6. Conclusion Spiritual drunkness. Proverbs 23 verses 29 to 35, Who hath woe? Who hath sorrow? Who hath contentions? Who hath babbling? Who hath wounds without cause? Who hath redness of eyes? They that tarry long at the wine, they that go to seek mixed wine. Look not thou upon the wine when it is red, when it giveth his color in the cup, when it moveth itself aright. At the last it biteth like a serpent, and stingeth like an adder. Thine eyes shall behold strange women, and thine heart shall utter perverse things. Yeah, thou shalt be as he that leath down in the midst of the sea, or as he that leath upon the top of a mast. They have stricken me, shalt thou say, and I was not sick, they have beaten me, and I felt it not. When shall I awake? I will seek it yet again. When the nation of Israel sought wisdom from the strange woman and believed the false doctrine of the surrounding nations, they became spiritually drunk and shipwrecked. They experienced what every drunkard experiences, woe, sorrow, contentions, babbling, and wounds. False doctrine always appears sweet at first, but at the last it bites and stings like a venomous serpent. God already warned his son about the bitter end of the strange woman. Proverbs 5 verses 3 to 4, For the lips of a strange woman drop as an honeycomb, and her mouth is smoother than oil, but her end is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Ecclesiastes 7 verse 26, And I find more bitter than death the woman, whose heart is snares and nets, and her hands as bands, Whoso pleaseth God shall escape from her, 
but the sinner shall be taken by her. The nation of Israel and the world will become drunk with the wine of the false doctrine of the strange woman, who is the well-known mother of harlots described in the book of Revelation. Jeremiah 51 verse 7 Babylon hath been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine, therefore the nations are mad. Revelation 17 verses 1 to 2 And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will shew unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. In the final verse of this chapter of Proverbs, the drunkard asks, When shall I awake? This proves that it is possible for the drunkard to awake from this deception. The prophet Joel commanded unbelieving Israel to awaken from the drunken stupor of false doctrine. Joel 1 verse 5 Awake, ye drunkards, and weep, and howl, all ye drinkers of wine, because of the new wine, for it is cut off from your mouth. Believing the words of God was all that was necessary for Israel to awaken from their spiritual drunkenness. Instead, they repeatedly returned to false doctrine. Just as this proverb ends, I will seek it yet again. Proverbs 26 verse 11, As a dog returneth to his vomit, so a fool returneth to his folly. 2 Peter 2 verse 22, but it has happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. Summary God called out the nation of Israel as his special people and gave them his word to instruct them in the right way. He established them as a great kingdom and set a king over them. As long as the king and the nation obeyed God's word, they would receive abundant blessings. Instead of believing God and being satisfied with what they had, the nation of Israel envied the wealth of the surrounding nations. They partook of their false doctrine, worshipped their false gods, and made covenants with them in order to increase their wealth. At first Israel did increase her riches, but in the end, they were overcome with spiritual drunkenness. Those at whose table Israel once partook proved to be their enemies. These nations turned against Israel, and God allowed these enemies to destroy their kingdom. Israel's capital city, Jerusalem, was broken down and their temple was burned. God's special nation was then scattered into all the nations of the earth. Dispensational consideration. While drunkenness in the flesh and the love of physical wealth are sins that should be avoided, these particular sins referred to in Proverbs chapter 23 pertain to the nation of Israel, their envy of the wealth of other nations, and their desire towards false gods. Israel's drunkenness is the spiritual drunkenness, drowsiness, and darkness which came upon the nation because they partook of the wine of false doctrine. Life Application While it is perfectly fine for believers to apply the wisdom taught in this chapter to their own lives, such as avoiding literal drunkenness, to misunderstand the doctrine of this chapter and how it applies to Israel is to miss the meat of the word. Spiritual deception is still possible in this present dispensation of grace. The Apostle Paul warned against believing another Jesus, a false gospel, and receiving a seducing spirit. 2 Corinthians 11 verse 4 For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted. You might well bear with him. Spiritual deception is preached every week in churches across the world. 2 Corinthians 11 verses 13 to 15 For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. This false gospel teaches sinners to give their hearts to Jesus, join the church, and keep the law, among many other lies. The Apostle Paul prayed for Christ to dwell in the hearts of saved men, Ephesians 3 verse 17, but those men did not get saved by asking Jesus into their heart. The lost do not invite Jesus into their hearts. Jesus invites the sinner to trust in his salvation. The foundation for salvation today is clearly laid out in Romans chapter 3 and 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Romans 3 verses 23 to 25, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood, 
to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 to 4 moreover, Brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. First, one must understand that all men are condemned sinners with no hope of escaping God's righteous judgment. After hearing the gospel, a sinner can then place their personal faith in what Christ accomplished on the cross as payment for their sin. Salvation is the free gift that God offers to everyone. Trusting in a confession, joining a church, water baptism, good works, or any other thing is futile. Trusting in anything other than what Jesus Christ accomplished on the cross will only lead to eternal condemnation. After trusting in him, the Holy Spirit is given to all believers as an earnest and a seal of their salvation. Ephesians 1 verse 13, 2 Corinthians 1 verse 22. Once saved, a believer can never be unsealed. Salvation is simply a matter of faith in God's written word. Proverbs 24 verse 3 through wisdom is in house builded, and by understanding it is established. In Proverbs 24, two houses are being constructed and filled, one by wisdom and one by evil men. Proverbs chapter 23, homework. Consider to put a knife to thy throat. In verse two of this chapter implies that the king should take his own life if he lacked self-control over his fleshly desires. This is particular to the nation of Israel and their temptation to take the mark of the beast during the tribulation. God teaches mankind that his soul has more value than his body. In Proverbs 17 verse 12, we read that it was better for a man to meet a bear robbed of her whelps than to meet a fool. The bear would maim and kill the body, but a fool would destroy the soul. Jesus taught this principle in his earthly ministry to Israel. Matthew 10 verse 28, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. God is teaching Israel that it is better for them to cut their own throats than to partake of the seduction of Satan's false religion, for once they take the mark of the beast, they are doomed to the lake of fire for all eternity. Revelation 14 verse 11. Concordance search, the word appetite is found only four times in a King James Bible. Study these references to learn how the word is defined in scripture. Its use in the book of Ecclesiastes helps us to understand that a man's fleshly appetite can never be satisfied. The account of Adam and Eve is the first such case. God told them that they could eat from every tree in the garden except one. They were not satisfied with what God offered, they wanted what was forbidden. This is the weak condition of man from Genesis to Revelation. It is only possible for the carnal appetite to be overcome by perfectly trusting in the word of God. Concordance search, the singular word dainty and its plural form dainties are found in the King James Bible six times. Read through each use and study the context to obtain a better understanding of what this word means. The word delicacies is also used in a similar manner in Revelation 18 verse three. Read. The young captive Daniel was tempted to partake of the king's deceitful meat and drink. With the wisdom of God, he was able to find the way to escape the temptation, 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13. Read chapter one of the book of Daniel and particularly note Daniel 1 verse eight. Concordance search, the word evil and eye are found together 30 times in a King James Bible. The specific phrase evil eye is found exactly three times. Read through each reference to understand what it means to have an evil eye. Proverbs 28 verse 22 clearly defines having an evil eye as one that hastes to be rich. The choice between the wealth of truth and the wealth of physical riches is a theme that extends throughout the entirety of scripture. For further study, God versus Mammon, Search a concordance for the word mammon, which is found four times in a King James Bible. Read the context of Matthew 6 verses 19 to 34. Matthew 6 verse 23 refers to a man with an evil eye as one who chooses the treasure of physical wealth over the treasure of God's word. In Luke chapter 16, Jesus is speaking particularly to the covetous Pharisees on the topic of wealth. Note in Luke 16 verse 11 that unrighteous mammon is contrasted with true riches. Concordance search, use Bible Gateway to search for the words sweet and word. They are found together five times. 
Each result is a reference to the sweet word of God. God's heart shall rejoice. Proverbs 23 verse 15 and 24 are the only references that I could find where the heart of God rejoices. There may be other references, and you can search the scriptures for yourself to find them. Consider searching for the word delight and all forms of the word please to find other references to things that cause God to rejoice. Example, Jeremiah 9 verses 23 to 24. In the book of Proverbs, the following references indicate what delights the heart of God. Proverbs 3 verse 12, a son corrected. Proverbs 8 verse 30, wisdom. Proverbs 11 verse 1, a just weight. Proverbs 11 verse 20, the upright. Proverbs 12 verse 22, they that deal truly. Proverbs 15 verse 8, the prayer of the upright. Proverbs 16 verse 13, righteous lips, note that Jesus is a king. Consider, to understand the red wine that bites like a serpent, read and study the following. The piercing serpent, Isaiah 27 verses 1 to 2. The red dragon, Revelation 12 verse 3. The scarlet beast, Revelation 17 verses 1 to 3. 